you think you're ready? Wow. Wir sitzen hier mit dem Nico de Pico, Coach for Postfinance Helix. Nico de Pico, thank you for taking time for maybe one of our last interviews before the end of Postfinance Helix. So the first question, is this goodbye now? Well, <laughs> um, you are going to see us at Switzerland in uh, the Hero League Finals, which is in two weeks right now, in the end of November. Uh, after that, I don't think we have any more tournaments coming up, but I will do my best and everything in my power to give a future for all of the players and try to find them new homes and see if they can get tryouts for other teams and just push them on into the world, right? Like the whole point of this project from my side was to help develop the players and to put Switzerland on the map and, and to really show other corporations and other bigger sponsors that this sort of project can work and you can get really good publicity from it and it is the way of the future and it is something that is going to continue living and we've see tr seen throughout the years how much league has grown worldwide like even the early matches of the world championship right now are beating the viewership numbers of the finals last year on the western scene so the growth that is there is just it's so huge and it just tells you that you know esports is here to say and so is league and Yeah, no, I'm I'm happy to be where we are. Very good. And so the growth of esports is undeniable. Yes, like you said, we've seen it with the League of Legends Worlds now. Um, in Switzerland, it's uh, not yet on the same page as other countries, but you've been here for a year now and you've followed the, the, the development of our scene, of our esports uh, infrastructure. How do you compare it to other countries now? After one year, do you, think, do you see some growth here or... What do you think of the Swiss scene now? I think the main thing that we've been able to do in the Swiss scene is just open more eyes to what we actually do and what actually esports is. And I think that the publicity that we've been able to create on esports and the professionalism of it, like we are a very healthy team, works out six days a week and we eat really healthy and, and like we are taking a very serious approach and that people get to see that there's a difference between a professional esports team and somebody who's sitting in their basement drinking energy drinks and, and and just playing for fun, you know? Like, that's not where we are. And that we are just as a regular sports team in terms of the professionalism that we do and the effort that we put in and the effort that the players put in. And I think that more and more people are understanding that. And that's where you got to start with anything, just just gain more information and give more publicity and give the people more understanding, then you're going to be more open to further projects. And I think on my end, uh, as well, something that maybe PostFinant doesn't see, but that I've seen uh, on my private side with where I coach private students, Lee, where I coach students privately, <laughs> yes, uh, I've had so much more Swiss students because they heard about PostFinance and they they want to try becoming professional. So before I went here, I, I, I don't think I had a single Swiss student. But now there are many who are interested and, and want to try. So I think that's a part of what we've done here and what we've been able to create. So you had an impact on the Swiss scene as a whole, uh, as we saw. So the other teams we saw, especially in the Hero League finals, you had to fight with uh, Silent Gaming. They were better than expected, maybe, because they got up. Um, they were going up against the pro team, the first pro team in Switzerland. Um, how can you compare now in terms of, of, of uh, how good you were or how good you are as the post-finance Helix, te post Helix team um, compared to other Swiss teams, big uh, teams like Silent Gaming or Mind Sanity, is there still a comparison there or you think it's a whole other league? I think there's a lot of teams, including us, that have made player, cha player changes. Obviously, we are the only professional team, so we are doing this full-time. Uh, sometimes, even people who don't do stuff full-time are able to have really good results at a tournament. 
and and some teams uh, in other games too like they have boot camps a week before and then everything just clicks and they do great and maybe the team that practices double the amount doesn't win so there's a lot about showing up on the day uh which will always be a factor with this sort of games as uh, same in, in chess or a any other sport as well and it's also uh, being accustomed to a new environment because if we play from from our office where everybody is comfortable then they're going to perform better than if they play on a stage that they've never been on before and but that is the same for everybody else and then you have some people who naturally accustomed to that easier and and naturally adapt to that situation easier uh i think that the biggest benefit that we have that that you don't necessarily see in the other teams is that these players are accustomed to a professional life so let's say that you have a player in silent gaming who's really good and you have a player in our team who's really good in the same position it would be easier for a another professional team to pick up the guy who's already had a year with us because he's already lived it and you know that okay he can handle it but you don't know that other guy from silent gaming potentially that maybe if you put him in this sort of environment he just wouldn't be able to thrive in it so it's also about uh knowing that the players can actually live the esports life that is necessary yeah and uh, those five players we have on the team now they've lived the esports life for a year now and uh, do you think in terms of uh, skill set, are they ready now for the biggest scene? They are ready for, for the, the life, the esports life, like you said it, they are accustomed to it. But do you think they have the skill set now for the biggest stage after this year? I think the players are really aware of what it means to be a professional esports player. And those who really want it more than anything and have the passion within them, still, they will be able to do it. But then there's also a lot of nerves involved, like you would have to pass a tryout in most cases. And even if you are the most prepared in the world, you can go up on that test and, and you can just choke, like you get too nervous. And then maybe you lose a good opportunity. But I think that these players that we have, that I've gotten to work with, if they really want it, like and they're really passionate about it, they will keep going and they will be able to make it in the end. I, I truly believe that. We have one player on the team who's got, got kind of a handicap now while Josh, while Joshy because he came into the team later into this year. You think he's he's got a handicap, like I said, or is he on the same level as the other players? Well, obviously he hasn't uh, lived as much of the life as the rest of the players, but I think he also has grown tremendously since he joined and he really opened up as a person and he like he's gotten a good taste and good understanding like even if you just w were with us for a month you would get a really good understanding of what it means and what it takes and and he got to play a few tournaments with us he, he has gotten and will get to play in uh, Switzerland and the Hero League finals we went to Rotterdam together so he really yeah I think he has a really good understanding of what it takes he hasn't lived as much so the experience isn't there but but he for sure should know by this point whether this is something he wants to do or not. And that's also something that we wanted to present, right? Yeah, definitely. So let's talk about you. Um, in comparison to your previous coaching gigs, how did this one compare to the other ones? It's, it's just what sort of experience the people had from before and how you work with that compared to working with somebody who doesn't have experience. So uh, this year has been a lot about building up the base knowledge, not only of their role, but also on a team level and then on a communication level and what sort of communication is good, what sort of communication is bad, like what is necessary, what do you actually need to communicate in order for the other people to do their job, how do we facilitate good inf uh, information through the game, how do we have successful reviews after, how do we do good planning. Uh, it's been a lot about just teaching them the ways of the professional life and the professional leagues and that's been the, the biggest difference yeah and it was also different for you personally because you got to live in switzerland for a year now did you enjoy it was there something more complicated than where you've lived before i think the biggest negative about switzerland has been uh, any sort of um, government uh, paperwork stuff because it's taken so long 
and like some things were just uh, extremely unnecessarily difficult. But outside of that, I, I really enjoyed living in Switzerland. I, I really love Bern, and I've been a lot of places now, just traveling around to see. And yeah, it's been it's been really good. And I much prefer Switzerland to, to Germany in terms of living there, which I lived before. And um, I just appreciate the clean nature and a space, I guess. So I hear from that you will stay here and coach the Swiss team in the future. You you hear from me yeah. this <laughs> because you like Switzerland so much. Uh, don't you? I think that uh, if there was a good opportunity, I would consider it. But it also depends on what other opportunities you have. But I will consider any and all opportunities that I have, and I, I would definitely be open to it. But it also depends on on how serious the project wants to be. You think that will push the Swiss scene a little bit more forward now and get more professional players and coaches involved into our scene because there's now an opportunity to play internationally? I think that this is a really good step for the region. And I think it's also really important for Switzerland to participate in this and to actually feel the strong team because it's going to be the easiest way to develop international talent that are Swiss. And right now there is no Swiss talent in the top leagues. And... Bando is in the academy team of Fnatic, right? That's not the top league. <laughs> it is. And he, it's and not, no, yeah. Yeah, it's not the top league and, and he was only brought in last second and he is not necessarily there next year. So there is nobody in the top league and there's barely none in the academy leagues, like the national level leagues. So it's really important that you start actually getting people out there because once you have some Swiss representatives on the top stage, it's a lot easier to create stories and create hype and create publicity that is healthy to help push the scene. So I really hope that there will be a good Swiss team there or several that can uh, represent Switzerland in a good way. It's like the Roger Federer effect everyone's always talking about. If you've got one big name, the others will follow. So that would be really good. Um, so thank you very much for your work you've done here, for showing us small Swiss players uh, and esports aficionados to how it can be, how this whole stuff works in a professional way. And thank you for being here and ta uh, thank you for taking your time for talking to us. Thank you, my pleasure. Esports.ch Powered by UBC.